first time I heard about the project was when I got an email from uh, Rob Levin, the editor. Uh, he was um, looking for like artistic teams to work on it and he didn't know exactly who he wanted to work on which part, but would I be interested? And he didn't give me any details about it. It was basically, it's this thing which has uh, got connections with Roddenberry, are you interested? Now I was pretty busy at the time with other, other projects, but he did say I would only have to commit no more than like two issues. And I figured, okay, I can handle that. And because it's Rob, and I trust Rob, and I like Rob, he's a nice, fun guy, um, I figured, yeah, I'd, I'd trust him on it. I don't know what it's about. It could have been about vampire kittens. I had no idea. I mean, he sent me like the synopsis with like uh, the Roddenberry branding document and some ideas from uh, Phil. It was strangely dark and moody compared to what I thought it was going to be because the story, when I read the script, is very much science fiction. But uh, the artwork itself was, was, I don't know, dark science fiction noir or something. The, the main character, the steward, was already designed by Dale Keown. All I was left to do was like to illustrate the story. I mean, and with, with something like that, that's pretty open. I mean, they say like there's an old guy or a young woman and, you know, I can design them however I like. Uh, and the way I like to work is that I like to design characters on the page as I draw them. Almost like uh, if I spend too, too long designing them in sketchbooks beforehand, then I think I've got the story, I think I've got the character. And then when I draw them in the story actually acting, they change. And that has basically invalidated days or weeks of research. So with uh, issue one, I knew what the steward looked like already because I'd already seen Dale's sketches. And then when uh, the other characters were born on the page, the first couple of things they said, the first couple of actions they made, were what defined them. I was drawing comics when I was a kid. I've always been drawing comics uh, or to trace them when I was really young. I went to art college, but I still always felt like I was a bit of an amateur. Uh, then I read a book by a guy called Gary Martin. It was The Art of Comic Book Inking uh, in about 1999. And he insisted that if you're going to do comic book inking, you should use a Series 7 uh, number one sable brush. And when I got this tool, thinking maybe it'll help me, the first lines I drew with it, I realized that all the years of working with really rubbish brushes had given me skills which I couldn't have realized with rubbish brushes. But when I got a proper tool, all of a sudden, it was there. I, I, I did this one page of a, of a sample script. And I looked at it and thought, right, I'm good enough. I'm good enough to be hired, I'm good enough to be published, I'm better than a lot of people out there who use brushes. It's got to the point now where I go from doing, I've gone from doing line artwork like Bernie Wrightson would have done back in the 70s, to doing fully painted artwork, to doing a mixture of both, and this all comes from the story. Uh, this, is a, this was a moment of realisation though. If a story is dark, the artwork will be dark. It doesn't matter how many people say, Freezer, brighten it up, put some love in there, put some bright shining rays, have everyone smiling. If I, even if I did that, there would still be some dark, twisted angles to this, and it's not something I can avoid. Now, I haven't started drawing issue five yet, but I've read the script, and it has a different vibe to it, totally. The character behaves differently, and the situation he's in is different. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like. I can kind of see it in my head as a vague sketch, but I'll only know what kind of beast it will turn into when I actually start drawing it. And the, the key point to this, the key spark, will be when I draw the cover, which I have to do when I get home after this. Uh, because the cover has a main, has, a, has an element to it, which is key to the story. And therefore, I have to decide what that thing is going to look like and how it's going to be rendered. And once that has happened, the rest of the artwork for the story will basically feed off of that. It will bleed out from it. I'm hoping that it will be significantly different, yet... The important elements like the steward and whatever will still be recognisable so that you will still be able to tell it's still the same artist but an artist with a different angle on the, on a, on the same, same idea for instance.